Hey teachers, I am excited to be starting a brand new video series all about one of my favorite online tools, and that is Flipgrid. In case you're unfamiliar, Flipgrid is this amazing online tool for teachers, and it's free, and it allows you to share assignments with your students, and then it allows your students to respond or submit their assignment using video. It's a lot of fun. And if you are a teacher that's using Google Classroom, one great thing about Flipgrid is that it is integrated with Google Classroom already, so it makes it even easier for you to share your assignments. Now in this first video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your grid, which is basically the same thing as setting up your class in Flipgrid. So let's go ahead and jump on my computer and I'm gonna show you how it's done. All right guys, so I am in Flipgrid right now and you can see that I don't have any grids created, so I'm gonna go ahead and create my first one. And like I said before, creating a grid is kind of like just setting up your class in the program. So click on Add New Grid. And for the name of it, I recommend just naming whatever your class is. So let's say Mrs. Vestal's history class. And then it's gonna give you three options to pick from. You can add students using their school email and it must be through either Microsoft or Google. I recommend doing it this way just because it's going to be the most secure option. Your second option has you add students using their student IDs and the third option just allow is the easiest option and you can share your grid with really anyone this way like I said I recommend doing the school email it's going to be the most secure for the sake of this tutorial because I'm not putting any students in right now I'm gonna go the public route Okay, so the next option is, is it's going to ask you, do you want to add a password? And what this means is when students go to log into the grid, do they need to use a password? And in the past, I always said, don't use a password. It's making it more complicated for students. But as we're seeing more schools move to online learning, there's been an increase in hacking. So at this point, I recommend adding anything that's gonna add an additional layer of security and a password will do that. Now, even though you're adding a password to it, I recommend keeping it something simple that your students will remember. So I'm gonna make mine, my last name, Vestal123. So that should be fairly easy for my students. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure they know that password so that they can put it in. And just click Next. Okay, so my grid is ready. Now I can go ahead and share the grid straight away with my students by copying this link and I can paste it in an email. We've also got lots of options down here. So we can embed this code if we have like a website that we're using. Your students probably are not using Microsoft Teams, but if your teammates are and you want to share the grid with them, you can do it that way. This is one I'm sure many of you will love, but Flipgrid is integrated with Google Classroom, so you can easily share to your classroom. And then this is another tool, Remind, which I'm not too familiar with too many teachers using at the moment. So let's go ahead and go to my grid, and I just wanna show you how you can customize this grid a little bit. Okay, so if you want to customize this grid, go ahead and hit on the pencil that says edit, and this is gonna let you change things about your grid. So remember, I had set this up with a public account, but once I start logging in students, if I wanna change it to school email, I can do that. You are allowed to change. I can also update the password that I created at any time. And this lets you know how you will receive notifications. So do you wanna receive notifications daily, weekly, every time a new video is uploaded? Do you want to allow students to download and share after they're creating their video? I do recommend that because it's gonna make it easier for students. Display auto-generated captions for best results. Videos should be recorded in an environment with little or ambient noise. This is going to depend on your students. I haven't found the captions to be super reliable, but if you have a student with an IEP that requires that, 
it's there for you and allow students to receive email notifications when new topics are created and new videos are recorded so do you want your students getting reminders about this if they're working from home you might want them to get reminders because that's going to remind them to get on and do their work and then you decide whether your grid is active or hidden. Now, right now it's active. If I were to change this to hidden, my students wouldn't be able to see it. So hidden is good where if you don't want students accessing it right now, but you know you're gonna come back to it and use it later, you can make it hidden for a little while. Now this is the fun part down here. This allows you to personalize your banner at the top. You can add a custom image by dropping a file there, or you can change it to something fun that they already have. So this is a history class, so we can see if maybe we can find something a little more history related. Here we've got people and culture, so let's go ahead and update with that. And so that is how you will edit your grid. Now the last thing I wanna show you is if you go into actions, you can add a co-pilot and this is great if you co-teach or if you have a teacher assistant, you can add them to your grid so that they have access to it as well. You can duplicate your grid. So let's say you teach multiple classes, you're a middle school or high school teacher or you're elementary and you're departmentalized. You can duplicate the grid so that way everything stays the same except for the students that are joining it. Um, I think those are probably going to be the options that you'll use the most. But that is how you get started setting up your grid. And in the next videos, we'll go over how to share this with your students and how to get started creating assignments. I hope the first video in this Flipgrid series is getting you super excited about using Flipgrid in your classroom. And make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel so that way you don't miss any of the other videos in this series or any of the other videos that I release on my channel. Until next time, happy teaching.